Gold is the direct to the dollar. And that is why for all these years, you've seen the gold price suppressed. You've seen the media uh, basically tell you, don't buy gold. It's scary. It's risky. It's dangerous. It's it's all because the U.S. is the world's reserve currency. They basically have had an unlimited ability to borrow. And if the dollar was unmasked as being basically a worthless piece of paper because of the gold price goes to, like you said, 50000 or 100000 or whatever, if that were to occur, then you'd have a panic out of dollars and panic out of treasuries, the U.S. would not be able to support the deficits that they've run year after year. The U.S. government's national debt has recently surged past a record-breaking $34 trillion, more than doubling in just a decade. With the debt growing at the highest rate in the nation's history, this unprecedented escalation is both staggering and unsustainable. The national debt now stands at over $100,000 for every person in the United States. In 2023 alone, the federal deficit reached a daunting $1.7 trillion, more than three and a half times its 2014 counterpart. Despite tax revenues reaching $4.7 trillion last year, a substantial $1 trillion had to be earmarked to service existing debt. Projections indicate a concerning increase to $2 trillion, meaning that over 20% of tax revenues are consistently channeled towards servicing past debts a cycle expected to persist and potentially intensify if interest rates rise. Concurrently, signs of strain are becoming evident in the U.S. commercial real estate sector, leading to tangible losses for entities involved. Renowned analyst Bill Holter highlights the looming threat of deflation, not inflation, which could collapse the entire debt-laden structure, imperiling the value of fiat currencies. Amidst these economic challenges, gold prices saw an uptick as the U.S. dollar dipped, Investors anxiously awaited interest rate decisions from various central banks. Bill observes that this surge in gold prices might indicate a shift into an unsettling economic reality, possibly characterized by extreme values like $5,000 or $10,000 per ounce. He advises against unquestioningly celebrating these increases as they could signal a transition into a world grappling with profound economic challenges. If gold prices skyrocket to $50,000 or $100,000 per ounce, it could trigger a panic out of traditional currencies, especially the US dollar, as investors seek refuge in alternative assets like gold. Such a scenario could have severe repercussions on the stability of the existing financial system. We will present clips from Bill Holter's interview with As Good As Gold Australia, but before we do, if you want more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for more updates. Thank you and enjoy the video. The debt service, now, the interest expense is over a trillion dollars per year. Yeah. Last year, the U.S. took in 4.7 trillion in tax revenues, and they're paying out a trillion. It's going to be a trillion five. It's going to be two trillion. As it stands right now, the U.S. is spending more than 20 percent of its tax revenues just to service past debt. And that's year after year after year, and that's going to increase. And especially if interest rates uh, were to move higher from here, you'd blow the whole thing up overnight. The world will cease. And let me go one step further. You were talking about inflation. You talked about interest rates. And then you brought up debt. Debt is already, I mean, you can look at commercial real estate in the United States, and it's beginning to implode. Those are going to be, those are real losses. Somebody's taking the losses. I mean, if, if a bank lent uh, 300 million, but the building can only be sold for 200 million, somebody's going to eat that $100 million loss. That's deflationary, not inflationary. And understand that the Fed's biggest nightmare is not inflation, it's deflation. Because once deflation takes hold, and they're not able to reflate the system, then all the debt comes down. And guess what? All these fiat currencies are backed by debt. So yeah. once debt begins to and actually fails, then the value of all these currencies basically goes to zero. So just understand, and, and you you were talking at the very beginning, you talked about gold was up 16% last year, and you think this will be a, a better year. Be careful what you wish for, because $5,000, $10,000, or much, much higher gold prices 
under mm. a gold standard, they cannot print limited amounts of money. And the the fact that they're able to to do anything via printing gives the, those in charge power. And if they don't have that printing press, if they're not able to do that, then they don't have power. Uh, in the case of the U.S., because it is the world's reserve currency, gold is the direct competitor. Some people may say, well, no, it's the euro or the yen or the British pound or what have you. That's they're, they're all fiat currencies. They're all they're all turds in the same bowl. Gold is the direct competitor to the dollar. And that is why for all these years, you've seen the gold price suppressed. You've seen the media uh, basically tell you, don't buy gold. It's scary. It's risky. It's dangerous. It's it's all because the U.S. is the world's reserve currency. They basically have had an unlimited ability to borrow. And if the dollar was unmasked as being basically a worthless piece of paper because of the gold price goes to, like you said, 50,000 or 100,000 or whatever. If that were to occur, then you'd have a panic out of dollars, a panic out of <coughs> treasuries. The U.S. would not be able to support the deficits that they've run year after year. The BRICS coalition's emphasis on a gold-backed currency fuels expectations of higher gold prices and challenges the U.S. dollar's global reserve status. Comprising influential nations like Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, BRICS aims to reshape the global financial system, counterbalancing U.S. hegemony and potentially altering international trade dynamics. Bill observes the expansion of the BRICS alliance, now incorporating 10 nations, including recent additions such as Iran, Saudi Arabia, and the UAE. He underscores the geopolitical significance of Saudi Arabia's groundbreaking decision made about a year and a half ago to accept currencies other than the US dollar, a move unseen since 1973. More recently, the UAE unequivocally expressed its willingness to accept all currencies globally except the US dollar. Bill highlights the importance of these declarations, emphasizing their potential far-reaching implications on the global economic stage. Moreover, famous analyst Egon von Greyerz asserts that investing in physical gold outside the banking system protects against risk. Bill emphasizes the urgency in Egon's message, warning that neglecting to secure gold holdings could lead to a loss of wealth. This concern is particularly relevant given the existing global laws dictating the legal ownership of assets held through intermediaries. Let's get back to the interview. First off, you mentioned the BRICS went from five to ten nations. Let's look at who those some of those five new nations are. Yep. Iran, Saudi Arabia, and the UAE. Saudi yep. Arabia, a uh, year and a half ago or whatever, said that they would accept other currencies than only dollars. It's the first time since 1973. UAE, uh, about a month back, month and a half back, came flat out and said, we will accept all currencies around the globe, except for dollars. That's huge. Go back to go back to Libya, go back to uh, Iraq. Saddam Hussein and Muammar Gaddafi were, you know, their countries were invaded, their gold was stolen, that's the first thing we did, and they were killed because they talked about doing a gold-backed uh, gold currency, and they were talking about uh, selling oil in non-dollars. We can't, the, the U.S. can't go in and attack Saudi Arabia or attack the UAE. From a military standpoint, we're, we're no longer, you know, the, the big guy on the block. Uh, the bully basically, his bluff called. As far as the comments from Egon, keep in mind, I'm sure you, you both have read it and hopefully your audience has read The Great Taking. And what that has to do is about is Basically, whether it's a bank or a broker or an insurance company, um, if you have intermediaries between you and your capital, you're going to lose your capital. So that's why I believe Egon is saying, you know, buy buy gold now or you're going to lose your fortune because you're going to wake up. Markets won't open. You'll call your broker. And nobody's going to answer the phone. And these this is not speculation. These are laws that are already written on the books all over the world where people who have 
bank accounts, brokerage accounts, insurance uh, products. It's not theirs legally anymore. They're the beneficiary, but the owner of those assets are the banks, are the brokers, are the insurance companies, not you. You know, that aspect of it. And I think that's probably why Egan's, you know, so adamant at this point. And I would add one more thing. Um, from a timing standpoint, my thought process is I would give it less than a 50-50 chance that the U.S. has an election. And don't ask me for what possible reason, whether it be real or a false flag or whatever. Uh, the powers that be that are in charge right now, I think they understand that if there is an election, that there's no way that they can cheat enough to be able to win. And if they lose, then some semblance of a rule of law is going to take over and you're going to see a lot of people going to jail. So from the standpoint of not having an election, the most likely scenario would be some type of false flag. And you've got a financial market or financial markets that are, are teetering on a tightrope and you get some type of false flag It'll, you know, it'll topple, it'll topple markets and you've got over 2 trillion in derivatives that are going to blow up. So basically, they're, in my opinion, my, my guess is that they're going to kick the table over prior to the election so that there's not an election. And then that will, that will then uh, lead to a domino effect where brokerage houses, uh, banks, Insurance companies, they go down. And this includes if you have stock in digital form with transfer agents. That stock is on their books. It's on their balance sheet for you as a beneficiary. And again, this is not speculation. These laws are on the books. So I think the, the, the time is coming between now and the U.S. election where people are going to wake up and find out, oh my gosh, I don't have anything. Gold prices could close the year as much as 10% above current levels on the back of potential interest rate cuts, UBS strategists said. Despite declines at the start of 2024, how do you foresee the future of gold prices and their significance in wealth protection? Share your observations in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.